Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and those who are another wherever you are in the world. I'm Ramblin' Rusty Elm, and you're watching Ramblin' with Rusty Starfield. Last time on Starfield, we finished off the portion of the quest that took us through the city of Londinium on the planet Dolomon 2, where we recovered some uh, samples for the uh, Red Devils team to use in their effort to combat the Terramorph threat and also learn that the Terramorphs are spread across the galaxy by the transportation of what everybody knows to be heat leeches. So, today we're heading back to Alpha Centauri and the city of New Atlantis to speak once again to Vey Victus. So, without further ado, Let's get into this. See what this sorry sick a horse from newer has to say for himself. Well, what a pleasant surprise. When I heard you and Hadrian were headed for Londinian of all places, I presumed you must be onto something big. Did you find what you were looking for? Should I use the impact? Or should I try and be uh, a little holier than now? I think I'll go with the empath route. Because I know I would be super angry. It's not oh, just my it. revenge was far from petty, Captain. The attacks were a correction. When I discovered the plant, I did consider handing over what I'd found, but we were at war. And I couldn't risk information that dangerous falling into the wrong hands. So I ordered the bombing of the Londinian spaceport, fixing two problems at once. Halting the spread of the city's terramorph 
outbreak raging from a barely understood source, the moment demanded quick action. So I did what was required. I removed a dangerous variable from an already catastrophic war. But then, as the war you ended, with him on now. my trial, my execution, I made a decision. After all, I'd given everything for the colonies. My life as I knew it included. And what did I get in return? Was there any effort by the UC to protect my legacy? My daughter's legacy? No. We were sacrificed when all we did was serve. So I kept what I'd learned and arranged the attacks to set things right again. My daughter. She becomes a hero. I become a trusted advisor, having found Kaiser, the research team, and cement my new position of influence when I hand them the name of the person responsible for the attack on New Atlantis. The dear departed Dr. Reginald Orlais, the associate who aided me all these years, and whom I always slated to take the fall. What luck he was stopped dead before he could hurt anyone else. His decades on the run brought to an end by another unlikely hero. Yeah. You. Manipulative piece of... Yeah. Ah, so I'm just your cleanup crew. Captain, please. You've benefited here as much as I have. Maybe more. It's why I had our lays reprogrammed Kaiser. Had that old machine guide you to where I found the plant all those years ago. I went to great lengths to ensure your and Hadrian's success. And look at the results. I know for a fact the cabinet's planning to honor both you and Hadriot once this is all done. Isn't that preferable to languishing away in obscurity? Running jobs on the tail end of nowhere for the vanguard? With only the vague mm -hmm. hopes of perhaps earning the right to buy a home in the well someday. I'm simply looking for you to acknowledge the truth. And let's not forget the importance of our actual endgame. Eliminating the terramorphs. Securing knowledge of the Lazarus plant. What we've set in motion is going to protect thousands, maybe millions of lives. Yeah, but what point? I'm just gonna freak and how out. many have you so killed people. to get where you are now? There are no great works that don't cost lives, Captain. Whether it's winning a war or digging a tram tunnel. So we sacrificed a few dozen in the attacks to possibly protect millions. That seems like a fair exchange to me. I only hope you'll see the same and leave my name out of the discussions to come. Mm. You know, I'm really not sure. I might... I might do it this time. Well, I do hope you'll keep the larger perspective in mind, Captain. We've done something great here. Let's not squander the opportunity to do more. I mean, I, I have asked in the past, what's the difference between the player characters and the spacers that we fight? Or the ecliptic mercs. I mean, I, I'm doing essentially the same thing they are. 
killing everybody in my way as I raid my way through the uh, various abandoned outposts that I find. So am I really all that different from them? I'm not sure I am. Talk about an existential crisis there. Where am I supposed to be going? Apparently in here. Perfect timing. We just got in. So on our end, good news. The microbe and the Aceles are both as effective against heat leeches as they are against terramorphs. Means either plan should work for clearing those critters off our worlds. Considering what the Lazarus plant is capable of, I don't think we can deal with those things fast enough. I already sent along info to the cabinet to get them up to speed. So what about your end? Did you find anything? Did my father I tell did. you what he knew about the Lazarus plant? Uh, Victus confessed he organized the attacks. Um, I knew it. The second I heard that recording, I knew. Why? Did he say why he did it? Yeah, I, I really want to give her this line. But I, I know deep down that it, it really was just about revenge. And that fixing the damage to the Sanan name was just a side effect. But does she really need to know it was all about revenge? Yeah. Don't leave me in suspense. Killed all those people because of a chip on his shoulder and an obsession with his own status. That sounds like they victus. Well, once we inform the cabinet, they can ensure he won't be able to do anything like this ever again. Yes, we leave out his involvement. Says to consider the lives he's helped to save. Well, I should pass that bit along to her. I'm sure he did. But he killed dozens of people. And I'm not about to let him get away with something like that. So I guess that gives us our final answer. Nothing left to do but head in and see what the cabinet thinks of it all. Unless there was more to discuss, this might be our last opportunity to talk things through before the cabinet weighs in on a decision regarding the Terramorphs. Aceles aren't hostile to humans, but they are mega fauna. If someone decides to pick a fight with one, it could get ugly. But they've already been yeah. spread far and wide once before when the UC was raising them as livestock, so the risk of introducing them to new worlds is minimal. Using them to clean up the terramorphs and leeches, though, it's not going to be nearly as expedient as the microbe would be. Given what we know now about the Lazarus plant, the speed of the job does matter. But going with the Aceles, we're at least dealing with known risks. Microbe is going to make the cleanup a whole lot quicker. If we're concerned about this Lazarus plant getting deployed again, that's the way to go. The cabinet can secure the Lazarus plant, and then we're not risking any surprises when it comes to dealing with a microbe. You're being paranoid. You know the science. You know we can make this safe. I do know the science. I also know math, and a one in a million chance of a mutation isn't zero. So I guess we're still in discussion. Probably best at this point to let the cabinet weigh in, see if they have a preference. Mm. 
It's hard to know. Unlike my father, the cabinet aren't butchers. But killing UC citizens, along with everything else he's done, is unforgivable. But if you're really that concerned, you could request they be lenient. They might be willing to spare him. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to request leniency. And here we go. I mean, it's got to be taken care of. Welcome back, all of you. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. But according to Hadrian's report and the second one I just received, it seems the Terramorph attack on New Atlantis was no random occurrence, but a planned strike. Is what I'm reading here true? The second report claims to know the perpetrator as well. Did Reginald Orlais actually commit these attacks, Captain? Orlais? It's true, ma'am. I heard the recording myself. My father figured out how to use Terramorphs as weapons. He did what? That, that, that's impossible. He doesn't have the kind of access to... Clearly, he made his own access, Chief Sarkin. Madam President, I have been saying for years that not dealing with that man was going to end in tragedy. Enough! I hope everyone here understands that what has just been shared is a state secret of the highest order. This information does not leave this room. Now, that's quite the accusation you're leveling considering Francois Sanon has not left containment for the better part of two decades. You have evidence to back this up? It just transformed a terramorph out of thin air. An invisible weapon. No planet would be safe. Heavens help us. Is that actually him? I'd know that voice anywhere. That's Francois. He knew they could do this. And said nothing. He's a sociopath. Plain and simple, ma'am. Officer, please collect that recording. Yes, ma'am. Begging your pardon, Captain? We'll, of course, be launching a full investigation into how this could have happened. Though I have little doubt the Admiral will be quick to share all he knows on the subject once confronted with that recording. Chief Yassine... Can you send one of your interrogators to have a little chat with the Admiral? I'll issue the order immediately. Good. Combined with everything else you all have uncovered. Well, I don't think the United Colonies can thank you enough. We failed the people of the Colonies by not dealing with Vavik the sooner. I intend to rectify that mistake immediately. I'm inclined to agree, Captain. Now, with our villain unmasked, we can attend to the other matters at hand. With the threads you brought together here, the Lazarus plant, the attacks, the heat leeches, the three of you have likely spared thousands of lives. But it now falls to the cabinet to ensure this can never happen again. As such, the cabinet will be securing the Lazarus plant on Londinian, all materials related to the plant will be classified to ensure no one else learns its true nature. A sound decision, Madam President. Tell the Freestar Collective? Why? Wow. So they have another tool to utilize against us? I'm in agreement. I failed to see the value here. Oh, that 
is an interesting idea. A grand gesture to further display this cabinet doesn't think like those of the past. The observers on Mars have proven such a gesture can bear fruit. So, you want us to make nice with the Collective by sharing our state secrets? No, I want us to display plainly the UC's actual intentions, that the plant will never be used as a weapon again. Hmm. Huh. That does sound worthwhile, Chief Kolkarni. Very well. We'll get the Collective involved in the management. Thank you for the suggestion, Captain. So then, to our final topic. The Cabinet has agreed to implement a plan that will deal with the Terramorph, and now also Heat Leech presence on human worlds. In fact, we've already begun enacting measures to check all UC ports and settlements for undiscovered nests. But we all understand this is only a partial solution. The project we're embarking on will be a long and difficult one. So our first step must be deciding how exactly this all will be handled. Madam President, this microbe is clearly too much of a risk. The Asilis are the safer approach. To someone with limited knowledge of biology, perhaps? The technology behind the microbe is solved science, Madam President. It isn't <laughs> dangerous. Using it to wipe out the Terramorphs would be the quickest path to protecting humanity. And fast results always lead to the best outcomes, don't they? As you can see, there remains debate among the Cabinet. We were hoping your group might issue a recommendation. Major, we've been having similar debates ourselves. But the Captain has yet to weigh in. I see. Captain, I know this may not be your area of expertise, but we'd like to know your take <laughs> on the matter. Well, in this case, I'm in a complete agreement with uh, Chief Yosef. The microbes are just too unpredictable. Because of one in a million one in a billion, even in a, one in a quadrillion chance, is not zero. And any random little mutation could wipe out humanity. I'm in full agreement. No need to be delving into unpredictable sciences. And Major Sanan, Dr. Walker, you'd find this acceptable? We trust the captain's judgment. Then the matter is settled. We'll begin the process immediately. Today marks day one for the United Colonies Terramorph Management Division, making you three the oh, founding members of the TMD. As befits such a group, the cabinet wanted to display its gratitude. Today, we will be adding three new Class 1 citizens to our ranks. Class 1? For the three of us? Uh, Are you joking? What he means to say is, thank you, ma'am. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. You all have earned it. Now, there's much to be done. Major Sanan. Dr. Walker, I hope you two are willing to continue your efforts, spearheading the TMD's research on Mars. We'd be honored, ma'am. As for you, Captain, the Vanguard will be providing much of the on-the-ground support for the TMD. As a member of both the Vanguard and the TMD, I believe you'll have your pick of duties. Speak to your commander, Tuala, if I recall correctly. He should be able to provide you with assignments going forward, plus help you collect the benefits that come with being named Class One. On behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our sincerest gratitude. This meeting is adjourned. Well, isn't that nice? I'm a class one citizen, overbearing government. And while I would like to agree that I get my pick, the game has been written in such Informed a way. Informed of the new status. Congratulations on making class one. 
game's written in such a way that uh, it's going to try and force me to go after Crimson Fleet next. Well, well, I've got to say, this is the first. I've never had a Class 1 citizen in my ranks before. Congratulations, Captain. It's a high honor. Have to do something big for the colonies to earn that sort of designation. Only ever met a couple myself, and certainly never given one orders. You should be real <laughs> proud. No need to thank me. You brought this all on yourself. I've already gone ahead and processed your Class 1 benefits. All UC goods and services should now have a thanks for protecting the colonies discount. And <laughs> the credits should be in your accounts now. But to get into your penthouse, you'll have to pay a visit to the Affilion Realty Office. They should be able to grant you access. Let's see, 12,000 credits in a penthouse. Uh, well, yeah. City life's not for everyone, I guess. But a lot of folks would kill for that kind of real estate. But with all that squared, it's time to get you a new assignment. There are your standard vanguard missions, putting those pilot skills to use defending UC space. Or you could help the TMD in cleaning up terramorphs. Oh, and I got a request from Dr. Walker. Wanted your help collecting biological samples to keep an eye out for any uh, new alien threats on the horizon. Any of those missions call to you? Well, I think I'm going to start helping uh, Percival with these new alien threats. Sure, he'll have all the specifics. If you find yourself looking for more work, you know where to find me. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call that an episode. I'm Ramblin' Rusty M. Have a good night, and don't forget to stop and smell the roses.